What's going on guys? So into this video, I am going to talk about the Leica Q3, my experience with this camera prior owning the Leica Q2. I'm also gonna tell you my experience coming from mirrorless cameras, such as the Sony ecosystem, which I shot for over 10 years, also with Canon, Fuji, Nikon cameras. So I think I could give you a pretty good idea what this camera is capable of and whether the $6,000 tag price of this camera is actually fair and something that you should consider. Let's get started. All right, you guys, so buckle up because there is a lot to unpack in this video. And the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is the body and the lens as a one single unit because the Leica Q3 is just one thing. The lens cannot detach from the body. And I think that's the magic about this camera or these type of cameras that have you know the lens and the body all together. Now, lucky for us, Leica has given us a great option. And the option that we have right here is the Sumilux 28 millimeters f1.7, which is a very great lens. Now this lens is super sharp and uh, performs really well whether you're using this lens during the day or even in lower light situations. So f1.7, you're gonna get that great low light capability. Now when talking about the aperture, the aperture goes all the way up to f16 and uh, the lens and the camera is actually pretty manageable. It's not heavy at all and you know feels really good in the hand. It's not top heavy, something that I was afraid of when I first got my Leica Q2. Now the one thing that I have to mention is when I picked up my Leica Q2, I was wishing that Leica would actually offer a 35 millimeter version, but I'm so glad that I actually stuck to that 28 millimeters and gave it a try because it helped me to understand the 28 millimeter versatility even more. Now, it makes a lot of sense because if you're gonna be picking up a camera and you're gonna be, for example, during a vacation, you're gonna be in places, restaurants, uh, club, whatever the case may be, uh, you're gonna be able to wanna capture more of the surrounding. For example, if you're at a party and you can now back up um, you know, too much, you're gonna think that you have a 20 millimeters rather than a 35. Now, this lens is also gonna be awesome for portraiture, and I would never have thought about saying this works about 28 millimeters, but because of my experience with the Q2 and even the Q3, I've been shooting a lot of portraits and I'm really happy with the results. I'll be talking about how I take these portraits in just a moment. All right, now we gotta talk about the sensor because Leica has changed the sensor in this camera. Now, in the Leica Q2, we had a 47, backside illuminated CMOS sensor, great resolution. In this one, the sensor is a 60 megapixel sensor. Now, when it comes to sensor or image quality produced by that sensor, I have to say that it's almost the same. You're not gonna notice a difference. Even you know having the 60 megapixel here versus the 47, I see no difference in the image quality. Where you may actually benefit from that extra resolution bump is if you're planning to crop, and that is something that I do a lot with a Leica. Q3. Now, I like to shoot portraits with this camera, like I mentioned before, and the way that I approach my portraits is completely different the way I approach my portrait with a 50 or an 85 millimeter. So, for example, if I want to take a picture of a bust, you know, I would actually back up until I feel the bust in the head, everything in the composition, and I was not my picture. Now, with the Leica Q3 and same with the Leica Q2, what I do is actually I back up a lot and you know I take in consideration that I'm gonna be cropping the image. And the reason why you wanna do this with a 28 millimeter lens is because it's gonna allow you to crop in pose without distorting your image, meaning that putting this object further away and the 60 megapixel resolution is gonna allow you to crop. And a lot of the times I get a similar result as if I've been shooting with a 35 or 50 millimeters, depending you know how far I am from my subject. So I really like this versatility of the 28 and the 60 megapixel for that reason alone. Leica introduces a brand new processor in the Q3 and we're talking about the Maestro 4, which is the faster version of prior processor. And you are gonna notice the speed specifically if you're coming from a Leica Q2, for example. Now, this uh, new processor is gonna allow the camera now to have face detection out of focus. You're also gonna notice the speed when navigating the menus, and of course, when shooting video, which we're gonna talk about next. Next up, I wanna talk about video specs really quick because I don't wanna be hang up. So I'm gonna actually list some of the specs right here and talk about one of the main features in this camera. That one is gonna be that right now in the Q3, we can record up to 8K video 30p in 10-bit 420, and also, of course, 4K video up to 60p in 10-bit 422. 
Now, this can actually be the perfect um, hybrid shooting camera for a lot of us, specifically, you know, with this 20 millimeter, which is very versatile, like I mentioned before, and with a fast aperture f1.7, you can also get some background separation. But this camera is going to suffer some massive letdown. And it is the fact that at the moment of this video, the only way that you have to record audio is via the onboard microphone right here on the top no microphone input. Now, there is a rumor that says the Leica may enable via USB-C uh, to be used as a microphone input uh, port. And again, something that we didn't have in the other camera because the other cameras did not have USB-C. Now, I hope that Leica does that. Now, the next thing that we have in this camera that could actually help you overcome that is that we have a micro HDMI port that's going to allow you to connect an HDMI recorder onto the camera, thus allowing you to frame yourself and recording the audio onto the uh, external HDMI recorder. Now, I do hope that Leica releases that firmware and enables the USB-C port to capture audio because this could actually be a great camera and the one solution for a lot of people. All right, let's talk about shutter speed in this camera because the Leica Q2 actually featured a mechanical shutter that went one over 2,000 of a second and electronic shutter that goes all the way up to one over 40,000 of a second. Now on the Leica Q3, we have one over 2000 in the mechanical mode, just like the Leica Q2, but the electronic shutter is actually less. It's one over 16,000 of a second. And this has never been a problem to me. I actually shoot open wide all the time in super bright conditions here in Miami. And I've never even came close to the one over 16,000 of a second. So I don't know if this is kind of like a condition because Leica upped the resolution now, or they figure it out that no one goes up high to one over 40,000 of a second and one over 16,000 is more than enough to shoot even open wide in super bright situations. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this sensor is not gonna be the faster sensor reader out there for my type of photography. I don't have that problem. I don't shoot, you know, fast action sports or, you know, fast passing subject. But if you're trying to use the camera for video and you wanna shoot motion, that may be a little bit of an issue, um, you know, that rolling shutter effect. Now, I mean, I don't have a problem with other cameras. I don't shoot fast action sports or cars passing by or anything like that. So for me, it's not a problem, but something to keep in mind if you're thinking about using this camera for video as well. Now let's talk about burst mode. This camera is gonna allow you to shoot up to nine frames per second when engaging in the mechanical shutter and up to 15 frames per second when engaging on the electronic shutter. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you're going to be picking this camera for the fast uh, spraying rate of 15 frames per second, the only thing that you should be concerned more than the frame rate is going to be the rolling shutter effect that I mentioned before. So if you're planning to get this camera for sports, probably that's not the one to get. And one of the main things that you're going to notice when picking up this camera is going to be the tilt screen and something that we didn't have in the Q or Q2. Now, I know that a lot of people hate that feature, but I'm kind of like one of those that love the feature. That means that I no longer have to get on my knees or on the floor from shooting from the waist down. And it's something that I do a lot, specifically when shooting street photography. Now, when it comes to operation of the screen, it's gonna be just like the Leica Q2, touch screen, very responsive, and the same menu. So the screen resolution is gonna be great. I think it got bumped, I forgot, I listed right over here. And I believe that the screen may be a tiny bit brighter than the Leica Q2. I don't have that camera anymore, so I cannot compare it, but I'll state it right here. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice is that the buttons that used to be on this side have been migrated over here and the function button now have been moved up. So now we have two buttons at the top rather than one. And that's because of the screen needed that real estate. And in my opinion, it's a better implementation altogether, specifically because right now you can operate the entire camera with your thumb like so, and it's something that I much prefer. Now, one of the buttons right here has been uh, enabled by default to be the uh, crop factor for the different fields of view that you can have with this camera or you know, emulating a 35, 50, 75, or 90 millimeters. So, this mode is only gonna work on JPEG. So if you choose, for example, the 50 millimeters, it's gonna give you an equivalent 50 millimeter field of view. So basically the way it works is by cropping away resolution, throwing away resolution. So the higher you go into the millimeter, so the 90 millimeter is gonna lose a lot of resolution, something that you can do you know, in post and we know the results. Now, if you choose to uh, actually utilize JPEG plus DNGs, the DNG are gonna save the metadata of that cropping option. It's not gonna crop the DNG for you, but when you enable that tool in Lightroom, the crop tool in Lightroom, you're gonna have, let's say if you chose 35, 
the perfect 35 you know crop line there for you to adjust it or move it around your image so i don't really find that much use for that feature and i have configured that button to be something completely different now when talking about the battery leica claims that this new battery gives you more battery life and that could be the case but i don't see that or i don't recall being much more than what i used to get from my leica q2 because i don't have it anymore i sold it and i think that the battery life may be actually about the same and that makes sense because remember we have a faster processor and it may be more power intensive and we also deal with more megapixel resolution perhaps one of the reasons why I feel that this battery gives me about the same battery life performance. Now in this segment, we're gonna be talking about the experience of shooting with the camera, what it feels like, and I'm gonna to try to describe it to the best of my knowledge. Now, this camera is all about simplicity while being sophisticated, and let me explain. If you take a look at this camera, when it comes to DOS and buttons, I mean, we have pretty much options, but they are not overwhelming the camera. That's one of the things that I like about this camera, and one of the things that I kind of like dislike about some of the Fuji cameras that are overwhelmed with dials, you know, that drives me insane, especially when they're on the top. So this camera has a on off button with a shutter release right over there. We have the side dial right over here that can be configured to multiple options. And that dial also have a press button that you can configure also for a lot of options. Now, one thing about all the uh, functionality of the camera is that most of the buttons, if you deep hold them, they are gonna allow you right away to configure it rather than having to go to a menu to configure them. You just press them and hold them and it's gonna give you an option where you can set that button to do. I think that that is incredible and I wish my Sony cameras were like that. Now, we are gonna have a shutter speed dial right here and like we mentioned before, it's gonna cap at one over 2,000 of a second. But what I do with this camera is I set it to hybrid shutter mode. So pretty much once I need more of the uh, 2,000 of a second, I can use this dial to go all the way up to one over 16,000 of a second. And that's the way I shoot. You know, I don't choose mechanical or electronic. I just use this dial to go past the 2,000, which would engage the electronic automatic. So I recommend you do that. Now, when it comes to the ergonomics of this camera, you know, at the beginning when I picked up the uh, Leica Q2, I felt that, you know, I was needing the grip, but I got so used to shooting with this camera that I actually appreciate this form factor. I feel that I can hold the camera better, you know, and I hold it like so. As you can see, I'm clamping the camera with my pinky and I have a thumb rest. This one is not a Leica one. I got it from Amazon and this one has a hinge so I can use those buttons right here and flick it when I want to shoot with the camera. So. Shooting with the camera is very comfortable and shooting manual uh, focusing with the camera is also very comfortable. Now, using the EBF in this camera is also a pleasure. It's pretty big and it has a diopter so you can adjust it to your eye prescription. I think the resolution in this uh, EBF may have been also updated. I'll list it right over here, but it's very clear and it has a fast refresh rate. So um, no complaints when it comes to the uh, LCD or the EBF. Now let's talk about autofocus performance because that's gonna be a big one in the Q3 and it, it is an area where Leica has made vast improvements. So first of all, like I mentioned before, we have face detection out of focus on top of the contrast detection out of focus and it is very, very reliable. Now I do find some glitches sometimes when focusing on people and locking on the eyes. A lot of the times I may see the two boxes on the eye but when I review the image, the image is actually not in focus. Now I'm assuming that Leica is gonna address this because sometimes it locks up and the image is in focus so it's having some hit and miss and I'm sure that can actually be addressed via firmware but other than that you also have multiple modes of out of focus animal detection out of focus now I gotta say that the Leica Q2 out of focus wasn't terrible at all I never had problems focusing with Leica Q2 I got used to its limitations which I just didn't find it actually limiting but I can do tell you that this camera is faster than the Leica Q2 and more reliable when it comes to autofocus. Now I wanna share a tip, something that I've been doing with this camera, specifically if you love shooting black and white, and that has been the black and white workflow that I've chosen with this camera. Of course, when shooting raw, you're always gonna get the image in color when you open in Lyra and then you're gonna have to convert it. But thinking and seeing in black and white is a complete different thing. Something that, you know, as funny as it sounds, it's the first time that I tried it with my Leica Q2. So basically what I do is I shoot with DNGs and JPEG and then I go and select the black and white high contrast uh, effect or film simulation. 
So that film simulation is gonna allow you to see black and white through the EVF, and it's also gonna allow you to see black and white on the screen. And when you review your image, your image is gonna be in black and white. So you can gauge your composition a lot better because you know before you would take a picture and then convert it into black and white, but when you can actually see the composition in black and white, it's a complete different ballgame to me and something that I've been doing. Now, I wish the Leica would have gave us, you know, a preset or a picture profile to automatically convert in black and white, but as of right now, at least I don't know, I don't have that picture profile and I have made my own preset. I just dump on the image and it gives me pretty much a very close effect as I get it with a black and white high contrast. I'm going to be listing that preset right here for free. So if you want to download an experience, feel free. Now, when it comes to the image quality of this camera, you know, it's going to be excellent and there's going to be a slight improvement over the Leica Q2. Now, for that improvement to be noticeable, at least in my opinion, you have to zoom in in the image and really look for it. But you are going to notice uh, a difference in the noise level. Now, the noise with the Leica Q3 is going to be a lot finer and it will look more monochrome, more like film grain rather than noise. Um, and again, you know, on the Leica Q2, um, the performance of the noise was really good and the low light performance on both camera is pretty much equal, even though we have more megapixel here. So I can say that, you know, when it comes to image quality advantage, you're not going to see a lot of advantage uh, from the Q2 versus the Q3, at least that's my opinion. Now, there are some considerations that you have to take with the way Leica handles the exposure. Uh, and one thing is going to be that this sensor, the 60 megapixel sensor tends to favor shadows more than highlights, or at least the algorithm tends to favor more uh, the shadows than the highlights. So one of the reasons why that most of the times I'll be shooting in highlight priority metering mode and then compensate with the exposure compensation if I need my image to be a little bit brighter. That way I know that I'm protecting my highlights at all time and you do get great recoverability when it comes to the shadows. Now, when talking about the lens, I want to give you a tip, and it is that this lens screams to shoot me open wide, but f1.7, you got to be careful if you're going to be shooting against bright sources of light because the image may be a little bit softer, um, you know, lacking a little bit of contrast, but that gets remedy once you pass the f2.8, and at f5.6, all the artifacts are just vignetting, they seem to disappear. But, I mean, if you're not shooting directly to a light source, you're not going to have a problem shooting in... Um, you know, f1.7 and the image quality and contrast is going to be there. Just something to keep in mind because I notice that, you know, pretty often. But other than that, you know, you're going to be very pleased with your images. And like I mentioned before, this camera actually performs really good in lower light situations. I wouldn't say that it's on par with my Sony 7 r 5 but I'm pretty happy with the results that I get from this Leica Q3. Now, I have to take a moment and talk about the Leica app, something that I never want to talk about any app from any other camera manufacturer, and I've tried them all. I've tried the Fuji, the Sony, the Canon, the Ricoh, the Nikons, and in my opinion, they all suck. They are super cumbersome to pair with the camera. They work sometimes. They don't connect some other times, and with the Leica, it works every single time. I never had a hiccup with connecting to the app and the operation of the app, the functionality, the user interface, I mean, it's perfect. I think every single camera company, if they want a great app, they should actually emulate what Leica is doing. And even the pairing process, if you would wanna go through the uh, wireless you know, connectivity, you can actually use the cable that Leica provides you to iPhone at least, that's the cable they provide, connected via USB-C into the phone and automatically recognizes the camera and then you can forget about that cable forever. It would actually connect wirelessly every single time without missing a bit. Now, more camera manufacturers who actually emulate what Leica is doing, so kudos with the app. And if you're coming from another ecosystem, you perhaps want to know what does it feel to migrate from another ecosystem to the Leica Q3 or Leica Q2. And to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be challenging, but it was the easiest thing ever. And one of the reasons is because Leica does things with a purpose. Everything in this camera has a purpose and it is in the right place. Like, for example, the menus. The menus are laid out in the best way that I've seen menus being laid out. In my opinion, Leica menus are the best menus out there. Really easy to access, you know, really easy to understand things. Things are in categories where you would expect those things to be, you know, like, for example, Sony that changes things around all the times, and sometimes to find something, you gotta, you know, navigate through a bunch of categories until you find what you're looking for. Over here is super simple. Basically, you, um, push the menu button and that's going to prompt kind of like the function button on a Canon 
or a Sony camera. And then you have the most usable options right there. You can always, I uh, believe you can configure these things, but I think you know, I'm fine with the way they are right now. Then if you press again, you start navigating through the different pages. And if you wanna select a specific category, you can actually go like so. And every time you see a little arrow, you have more options right there. So it's really easy to um, find things where things are. And it gets to a point in a short amount of time that you remember where things are. Now, that is something that I cannot say about some of the other cameras that I shot before. Sony, for example, sometimes they seem to be a little bit overwhelming, too many things nested. And one of the things that I like about the Leica is that the text and the uh, tabs are really big, so it's really easy to read. So when it comes to buttons, even though you do have a fair amount of buttons here, it doesn't seem super congested, the camera. It's another thing that I like about shooting with this camera. And the configuration of those buttons is also even a breeze. So basically you can toggle between functions for the same button as many times as you want at a glance in a pinch. When it comes to ergonomics, um, one of the things that you're gonna notice at the beginning is that, yes, you're gonna feel more comfortable with your Sony's or Canon's or Nikon's or Fuji cameras because of the grip of those bodies. But soon after, you're gonna find yourself um, pretty much at home with this camera. And I have a thumb wrist like I showed you guys before in the camera, and this is the way I hold the camera. I just find it pretty intuitive in my opinion and very comfortable. It took me a couple of days, but now, you know, that's the way it rock. And at the beginning, I bought a grip, an extension grip, something that I don't use with this camera in particular because it's not heavy at all. And, uh, you know, I find it pretty comfortable. Now, do I consider this camera as a perfect camera? And by no means is not perfect. Now, one of the main thing is that this camera has great video specs, but one of the things that kind of like upsets me a little bit is that as of right now, I cannot record audio into this camera because I can live without having to look at myself on a screen, but I cannot actually deal with capturing audio only from the top of the camera. And having up to AK video recording and not giving us any audio input uh, capabilities, I think that has been a big mistake by Leica. Now, like I mentioned before, um, there's a rumor that Leica may enable the USB-C port to be used for audio input. And I wish they do that because the video quality out of this camera is great. Now, one thing that you don't have in this camera, and I don't think that Leica will be able to remedy, uh, you know, unless they come up with their own dongle that's gonna have audio um, monitor and input, but you know, you're never gonna be able to gain an additional headphone jack here. So I don't know, maybe Leica has some solution, but I wish we had microphone input and headphone jack as their standard, standalone, you know, jacks. Now, the other thing is that this camera only features one single SD card slot. I did not have any card failure, so knock on wood. But my Leica M11 features one single SD card slot plus internal SD storage or internal storage. Now, I wish that Leica would have added that specifically at $6,000 that this camera costs. You know, that's kind of like one of the things that I wish this camera had. But to be honest with you, other than that, I think that's one of the main things. Now, would I recommend this camera to anyone or do I think that it's worth spending $6,000 in the Leica Q3? And the answer is gonna be flat out no. I think that $6,000 uh, for a camera is a lot of money, specifically if you cannot write off that money, you know, having to fork out $6,000 for pleasure, unless, you know, you do have the money and, you know, you wanna treat yourself, by no means go and do it. You're not gonna regret it. But in my opinion, you know, I kinda like thought after selling my Leica Q2 and shooting with Leica Q3 that I would've been just fine keeping my Leica Q2 and maybe waiting for a much more vast improvement, maybe on a Q4. Now, I do have to tell you that right now, it is a great time to find a great deal on a Leica Q2. Now, remember, the Leica Q2 also has great video specs, and you're gonna sacrifice a couple of things. You're not gonna have the tilt screen, but you know I know that a lot of people doesn't like the tilt screen, so if you're one of them, you're gonna feel right at home with the Leica Q2. And the main other thing is that the Leica Q2 does not have a USB-C, so charging the battery, you're gonna need the charger anywhere you go. Whereas with this one, you know, you're gonna have the conveniency of having the USB-C port. I mean, something that most cameras from <laughs> for several years ago are doing, you know, Leica just does it right now in 2023. But my advice is that if you uh, are gonna be getting a Leica for the first time, perhaps you should start with the Leica Q2. You're gonna get the same lens, you're gonna get the same ergonomics, almost the same layout, the same way, actually it's a little bit lighter, the Leica Q2, at least the different weights right over here. But you're gonna be much happier because you could get one for about $3,400. I even saw on eBay one for $3,200, you know, and this one go for 6,000. So for 
almost half of the price, you can get a camera that does pretty much the same. And when it comes to image quality, you're not gonna see a difference from 47 to 60 megapixel. You know, I've done the comparison, it's not worth it. So if I would have had a chance to actually test it like a Q3 before I pre-ordered the camera and received it, most likely I would have realized that, you know, I was just fine with a Leica Q2. Now, do I regret selling the Leica Q2 and getting the Leica Q3? I do not regret it because I do like the extra features, the fact that I can charge the battery while the battery being in the camera and the tilt screen for me. You know, I'm one of those, I'm a sucker for tilt screen. I need that screen to tilt for street photography and everyday shooting. I just love that type of photography and I do it. Something that I wish my Leica M11 would have at some point, and I know a lot of people are gonna be murdering me right now in the comments for saying that, but you know, that's just me. But again, guys, you know, if you have the money, go ahead and go for the Leica Q3. You're not gonna be uh, disappointed with this camera and it features great improvements. Now, if you want the same experience and you wanna save money, I would stick with the Leica Q2, find one in good state, good condition for almost half of the price, call it a day, and you may wanna wait for a Leica Q4 in the future. So this is gonna wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you had enjoyed this video. Should you have any questions, drop them in the comment down below and I'll answer all questions as usual. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.